ծուցյան եւ ծանր բահերին քեզեմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաղթանակի Good afternoon. It's so good to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let us begin today's show as we always do, to give praise and glory to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to welcome you to a new series that we're starting today. As you know, for the last couple years, we've been sharing with you the gospel messages that come to us. It's called the lectionary readings. In other words, every single day of the year, we have unique readings that our church fathers have prescribed. Just like a doctor would prescribe medication, our church fathers have prescribed scriptural readings. And this is called the lectionary. And so for the last couple of years, I've been talking about the lectionary gospels in particular, those readings that come to us on those particular Sundays. Today we're going to be starting a new series, and that's called the Armenian Christian Today. Because as we have learned, it's also important that we apply. And we're living in a world today that is almost void of God. In other words, God is somehow put to one side. And you know who we have to blame for that? Nobody but ourselves. You see, many times we, we create structures where God can exist, and we say, wait a minute, we don't want to take God outside of it. And the most, uh, the, the most uh, obvious example of that is the church, right? We talk about the church, where God is, the home of God, the house of God. And so in our head, we sometimes believe that what happens in church is okay for church, but what about real life? What happens when we step outside of the doors? And certainly that is not the image, that is not the practice that our church fathers have ever intended. And certainly for us, that is not the practice of what church should be or is. In fact, the church is part and parcel of our lives. It's the applied Christianity. A lot of times you have concepts, but then you have to apply them to real life. For instance, mathematics is a concept. When you apply it to your real life, let's do something very basic. We know 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's a concept. It doesn't, it's just a couple words that we've put together. But if you were to take two shoes and add it to two shoes, you would have four shoes, and now you get that that mathematics is applied. Two plus two equals four. In the same way, Jesus talks about love. He talks about the commandment to love, to share with one another, to have compassion, to have an open heart, to have a pure heart. Now, how do we apply that in a world where sometimes it, it's almost impossible? You know, we drive down the freeway and somebody gets mad at us and our immediate reaction is to get mad at them again. Well, how do you apply what Jesus says? If we were to, uh, if we were to turn the other cheek, what would that make us? What, just some kind of punching bag for people? Obviously, that's not what Jesus had in mind. In fact, Jesus gave us a lesson of life. Not lessons in life, but an entire lesson. And that lesson came to us vis-a-vis -vis through Jesus' instruction, but more importantly, how he applied that instruction. In other words, he went up on the cross. Imagine if Jesus had spoken about sacrifice, about giving, and about giving of oneself, but never went to the cross. If he said, okay, that's it. I just talked about it. Now you guys go out and do it. No, he gave us not only instructions with words, but he actually gave those instructions with his life. And so too, in our lives, we have many difficulties. We have many problems. In fact, the world gives us problems that we have to answer. For instance, right now we have epidemics that are going on. You know, a few years ago we talked about AIDS as incurable, but today they're talking about AIDS finding a cure. We find all kinds of illnesses. In my times, an end came to the polio. Polio was once a, a killer of people. It, it maimed people. Today, it's virtually eradicated. And these things evolve over time. Life evolves. And as the Christian lives, he or she needs to evolve. 
We need to evolve. Now, what does that mean, evolution? Does that mean that somehow we don't believe in God? No, it means just the opposite. It means that we believe in God. It means that God is in control. God has a life, and He's carrying us with Him. Okay? So it takes us to look around, to see the beauty. That we're not living in a land 2,000 years ago like Jesus was, but we're living today in 2013. There are planes, there are trains, there are automobiles. There's all kinds of things that affect our lives. And we have, of course, financial issues. We're trying to make the best that we can. Some people who have families are struggling with financial issues. How do you, as a Christian, how do you take that church and bring it into your life today? For instance, did you know that in April, the Armenians commemorate the genocide of 1915? Did you know that that's part of history, but there are genocides happening right now? And it's up to the Christian, not just the Armenian Christian, Christians, for us to wake up and see that we are all brothers and sisters. That this month, as we commemorate the Armenian genocide, there is also a genocide happening in Darfur. And so we as Christians need to respond. For instance, this month I have taken it personally and I invite you to get involved in it personally. Once a week I am fasting for Darfur. Now you say, well, what, what does that have to do with church? It has everything to do with church. Jesus said that there are certain things. In Holy Scripture he says there are certain things that prayer alone cannot address. But prayer and fasting. Well, what did he mean by that? So in this series, we're going to be applying what Jesus said, taking his words and applying it to our lives. What, what does prayer mean? Does it mean to just sit there and say, God, please help me. I don't have any money in my pockets. Fill up my pockets. Or does it mean something quite different? Obviously, you know the answer. But how? How does it differ? Many times we approach our faith in a very childish way, childish and immature way. We think of God as this big Santa Claus. And so if we pray and if we're good and if we haven't been naughty, he will give us some good things in our lives. So we pray, God, take good care of me because I've been good. I haven't cheated. I haven't done this and this. No, God is not. That, that's Santa Claus, right? He knows when you've been naughty or nice. Yeah, that's even a song about him. But God is something even greater. He's the love that's in our lives. He is the love that's outside of our lives. He is love all around us. How do we apply that to our lives? So in this series, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at life situations. For instance, big items such as genocide. For instance, small items that seem big to us relationships that we have with our partners, with loved ones, boyfriends, girlfriends. How do we apply Jesus' teachings to our lives today? And this series is going to be called The Armenian Christian Today. Because it's not just a Christian message, but it's an Armenian Christian message. And that means the tradition that comes with it. And you say, well, wait a minute, what, what, what's going on? What's a Christian? Well, Armenian Christian has a unique standpoint in that we have seen crucifixion and we have seen resurrection. I want you to remember that, that in our lives we have opportunities to many times witness to the resurrection and we don't take advantage of that. It's very easy for us to talk about the evil that takes place in the world. But we, as Armenian Christians, are here today as living proof of resurrection. Let me tell you this. April month, we, tell, we commemorate the uh, genocide. Do you know one of the things that they said about the Armenians? This was a big Turkish leader. He got up and he said, we will have a genocide. Genocide is just, you know, suicide is killing the self. Homicide means killing somebody else. Genocide means annihilating the entire gene pool, getting rid of all the Armenians. We will have a genocide. We will eliminate all the Armenians. And one Turkish leader said that there will be just one Armenian left, and we're going to put that Armenian in a museum. Now today, you look around the world. Yeah, there's not too many of us, but you know what? We gather together. We pray 
according to our traditions. We gather together, we speak our language, we gather together and we create a newness, a new life. Now you tell me, is that proof of resurrection or is that crucifixion? To me and to the Christian, that is the Armenian Christian coming out in us. In other words, we are witnessing to Christ's resurrection through our lives. And that's the power that we have, each and every one of us. Today, as we start this series, I'm asking for your prayers to come together in a, in, as a prayerful community, to realize that our faith is not just limited to a book that we put somewhere and we close it and we put it to one side. Our faith is greater than a book. Our faith is a living faith. Our faith has been given to us, handed down to us by Jesus Christ himself. The Bible in our church is called Asfazashunch, the breath of God. But it is not something that God alone gave to us. No, the church produced it and gave it to us because God gave us something much, 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 much greater than a Bible. He gave us His only begotten. He gave us His Son. He gave us Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, in His turn, said, I will not leave you alone. I give you my body. And that body is the Holy Church. It is in this tradition that we apply our Christianity, that we put Christianity to work for us in all the difficulties that we have. I'm inviting you to join us every week as we start this series. And I want to take this opportunity to thank our spiritual father, His Eminence Archbishop Hovnan, who gave us this opportunity to have the In Step with Christ series. And we thank him for this opportunity as we begin this new series with you, with all of us together for the greater glory of God. Let us give thanksgiving always and praise to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We look forward to seeing you next week.